Hello, this is Bilal, your economic instructor. Today we'll be solving some MCQs for the chapter Unemployment for the level O levels. So let's get started. Which combination of policy measures is most likely to increase the level of employment? All right. So <clears throat> a decrease in general taxation. So if we decrease taxes, there'll be more profits. People will invest more, more employment opportunities. Decrease in the rate of interest. Well, this, when the interest rates go down, business investments would increase. Hence, the aggregate demand would increase. And it is likely to create employment, all right? So let's look at the other options. Decrease in general sales tax, general taxation, and increase in the interest rate. Well, if you are increasing the interest rates, uh, the businesses won't invest, hence this will not increase employment. Increase in general taxation. Well, this is bad. Why is this bad? If we increase taxes, profits would decrease, businesses would shut down, and eventually data bye-bye to the employment. And D is also incorrect. So the correct answer is a. Now, what is full employment considered to be? Full employment basically means when there is no cyclical unemployment. <clears throat> All the resources are fully utilized and there is no cyclical unemployment because um, if we can say this, we are operating at the full employment level of the PPC. So that is full employment. Whenever there is full employment, there will be frictional unemployment, but there will not be cyclical unemployment. So this is a theoretical question. If you know the concept, you can get it right. If you don't know the concept, obviously you'll struggle. So whenever full employment is being considered, this means that there is frictional unemployment, there is seasonal unemployment, but there is no cyclical unemployment. There is 0% cyclical unemployment. Whenever a country has 0% cyclical unemployment, we would say that it's full employment because at any time in this world, in any country, there will be some people switching jobs and they will be unemployed. So we don't consider that as unemployment. An economy has a budget deficit. Now, what does budget deficit mean? This means that the taxes are less compared to the government spending and a high inflation rate. What is likely to be a consequence of a rise in unemployment? So if the unemployment rises, which means that people will have less money, right? If they have less money, the consumer expenditure is going to decrease. Consumer expenditure decreases, aggregate demand falls. This means that the demand pull inflation would decrease. So lower and lower. This should be the right answer, B and D. Let's look at budget deficit. Now, if people are unemployed, the government will have to give a lot of unemployment benefits, which will increase the government spending. Hence, larger larger so the right image the right sorry <laughs> answer is b which two types of citizens are counted in the calculation of unemployment rate so for unemployment we need unemployed divided by employed right uh, labor force which includes employed plus unemployed so let's look at the option <clears throat> a full-time student he is not unemployed he's a dependent person so he won't be included a prisoner is willing to work but is not able to work because he's in a prison a retired person no so just by looking at type 1 we get to know a b c and can cannot be the answer so d is the right answer <clears throat> which change to fiscal policy now fiscal policy means what government spending and taxes is most likely to reduce cyclical unemployment in our economy. So if we need to reduce cyclical unemployment, we need to increase the aggregate demand. So for that, we need to increase government spending and reduce taxes. So increasing direct taxation, incorrect. Increasing budget deficit, correct. Budget, now this, this is what the examiner does. 
instead of saying government spending increase or taxes decrease it would test you on economic terminologies which is budget deficit so budget deficit means that the government spending is increasing this means the aggregate demand is increasing and hence this is the right answer increasing money supply is incorrect because this is a monetary policy and budget surplus is incorrect because it's the opposite of, opposite of b so it cannot be right which combination of policies is most likely to reduce unemployment all right income tax we would need to reduce the income tax so the government spending we would like to increase the government spending and voila we have our answer we don't even need to look at the rate of interest rates right why would we need to increase government spending because whenever there is unemployment a simple rule to follow is increase aggregate demand unemployment rate would decrease so that is how i calculate or i analyze these answers and you can use the same it's pretty effective what describes frictional unemployment frictional unemployment is basically a short term unemployment right uh, it is basically caused by people searching for new jobs that is one example right let's look at the other option okay unemployment caused by a fall in general is caused by a fall a general fall in economic activity which means a fall in aggregate demand so that is cyclical unemployment caused by time of the year which means seasonal now we know frictional includes seasonal and search unemployment so b can very well be the answer let's look at the other unemployment caused by wages being too high so that is unemployment caused by minimum wages d unemployment caused by workers searching for jobs well d is the right answer because that fits the best frictional unemployment although seasonal is a part of frictional unemployment but in economics we consider frictional to be search unemployment and seasonal is something different because both of them are short run therefore i explain them when i explain frictional unemployment so d is the right answer <clears throat> information about job vacancies on a government website has led to a decrease in short term unemployment all right short term unemployment again search unemployment people are getting jobs quickly faster that is the concept what is the term for this type of unemployment this is basically frictional unemployment easy peasy lemon squeezy right all right let's move on what is an example of someone who lost their job because of structural unemployment now structural unemployment has uh means basically technology replacing labor or uh we can say the fall in the product of an industry that leads to structural unemployment as well let's look at the options <clears throat> anisha lost her job as an engineer when her firm had to make redundancies in recession which means when the aggregate demand was low which means that this is cyclical unemployment Jamie lost his job as an ice cream seller during the winter months now this is seasonal unemployment Sanjeev decided to stop working and claim benefits when the government increased unemployment benefits well this is unemployment due to high unemployment benefits d is the right answer Sanjeev lost his job as a bank worker when the bank replaced his job with a new computer system hence technology is taking over jobs this is what do we say structural unemployment yes which government policy would be most likely to reduce structural unemployment now whenever there is structural unemployment we need to train the labor so that they're skilled in something else and they can get a job because their job has been taken by a machine or a technology decrease the rate of interest well this would increase employment but not necessarily those who are structurally unemployed let me give you an example now this sanjeet the person above that we discussed over here indeed he is a bank worker now 
if I reduce the interest rates and another bank opens, would we keep him? We would simply keep the new computer, right? So Sanjeet would again lose his job. So the most effective way to reduce structural unemployment is to train the laborers. So A cannot be the right answer. Decrease a tax on goods and services. Again, this would increase the profits. More businesses would come. But again, if a bank comes into business, they won't hire Sanjeet. They would say, we'll just hire the new computer and increase in spending and education and training. Although A and B would increase employment, but it would not solve the problem caused by structural unemployment and increase in tariff on imported goods. So this means we cannot import any more. We will import less. Hence, locals would produce more. But again, Sanjeev does not get his job back because his job is still replaced by the machine. So D cannot be the answer. What is most likely to lead to a structural unemployment in a country? Country experiencing negative economic growth, which means aggregate demand is falling. The country is experiencing a period of positive economic growth, which means aggregate demand is increasing. Now, this is both related to cyclical unemployment. Country is moving from producing primary sector to secondary sector. Well, C is correct. Why? Because when we move from primary to secondary and secondary to tertiary, it is known as structural unemployment. The table provides information about a country's labor market. Now, the population is 2 million, labor force is 1.2 million, number of employed is 0 0.9 million, full time students is 1 million. What is the rate of unemployment? Now, Unemployed. Oh, where did it go? Unemployed. Okay. So the labor force, the formula is unemployed divided by labor force multiplied by 100. So the people that are unemployed is, we don't know, right? We know the labor force is 1.2 million. And the people employed, now we can use the formula for labor force, which is labor force is equal to unemployed plus employed so 1.2 is equal to x plus 0 0.9 so 0 0.9 goes over there subtract itself so 0 0.3 is the number of people that are unemployed 0 0.3 million right so according to this i think the answer should be 25 percent and we multiply this by 100 as well so it should be 25 percent i guess yeah it's 25 percent right moving on 13 the table shows selected indicators for the labor market of an economy in 2014 and 18 okay the labor force is the same employed workers have increased long-term unemployment has also increased employment in manufacturing has decreased employment in services has increased according to the table what is the most likely type of unemployment in 2018 so long-term unemployment means basically there is cyclical unemployment but if you are moving from manufacturing to services this means there is structural unemployment as well so we are having more structural unemployment right so D would be the best answer although there is long-term unemployment which means cyclical but only 1 million people and structural unemployment has been greater because the employment in manufacturing industry has increased right so we can conclude that and long-term unemployment not does not necessarily mean cyclical unemployment it can also mean structural because when an industry shuts down or when we are moving from primary to secondary or secondary to tertiary it takes time to retrain labor and make them employed again so both can be considered as long-term unemployment <clears throat> which type of unemployment is the result of a permanent fall in demand for the product now it's just the product it's not the economy it's not aggregate demand had this been aggregate demand it would have been cyclical but it's just one product 
nobody wants to buy that it's saying permanent fall nobody wants to buy a typewriter for example so that is structural unemployment a shop was made redundant due to introduction of self-service checkouts now what this means is you eat and uh, uh, you check out on your own pay on your own this happens in other countries not in pakistan because we would basically steal right so which type of unemployment is this now technology is replacing workers right so this is structural unemployment good now as you can see most of the mcqs focus mostly on structural unemployment so you need to keep the concepts for structural unemployment pretty clear right so i hope you got most of them right thank you until next time